Hi, this is Dan from Inclusion Space. Today I wanted to um, look at this document from the Special Education Advisory Council. Um, the document is called Is Your School Inclusive? Um, I'll, I will link to this document below um, in the description of the video. Um, and um, it says, I'm just going to go through each section and um, add my comments. Um, and I encourage you um, to take a look at this document um, uh, with your school. It would be a good opportunity at a, at a staff meeting to look through each section. Um, maybe have a group of people um, um, from the team. Uh, maybe at a staff meeting, maybe like you know five or ten people could sit down and, and take a look at each section, and then everybody could report back and discuss what they learned. Um, so anyway, this is a check. A checklist is intended to offer a proactive way to ensure that our schools are inclusive. Um, it provides helpful ideas to make our schools inclusive at all times, and it's um, available for use to copy and distribute. Um, first section: <coughs> inclusive communication. Um, basically, this document has one, two, three, four, five, six six sections so inclusive communication um, it's just a checklist do all communications from the school and classroom always get distributed to all students including those with disabilities um, it's just important for uh, case managers to be aware um, how, how are documents being distributed if, if your student isn't always in the special ed class uh, if they're not always in the general education classroom are they missing out on these documents if they're coming home? Um, are the uh, particularly um, are the names of all this, all the students on one master list? Are, are uh, names and addresses, or are there two separate lists? A, a list for special ed and a list for general ed? Because usually, if there's two separate lists and documents are going to the two different lists, some are going to get missed. So, for those main documents, there should be one master list that all all the uh, documents go home to. Um, Next item, if schedules and teacher assignments are sent to students before school starts, does this include students in special ed? This is a huge issue, a huge issue. Schedules, getting figured out for what, what's an, uh, an inclusive schedule and can that, be, can that be done in a timely manner at the same time that everybody else is, gets sent out. Then that's a conversation that needs to be had with the administration, with the special ed, with general ed. It just needs to be figured out probably at every school so they have a plan in place to to address that. Um, and if changes to the schedule need to happen, so be it. But there needs to be a schedule that has that ha where inclusion is addressed um, that, that happens in the, in the you know in a timely manner when everybody else gets their schedule. Otherwise everything gets messed up um, from the way it feels to the way it works, it just not it just doesn't work and doesn't feel right. So it's important. Um, next, does the school website homepage include news about activities and accomplishments in the special ed classes? Um, great idea, um, and and probably fairly easy to do. Um, do the parent conferences? Um, open house orientation and school tours include Minneapolis public school students with disabilities and special ed staff. Um, that would be a really nice way to um, branch inclusion into these other areas um, is to maybe uh, um, build opportunities for, the, for, for those um, um, kids with you know in special ed to uh, be able to participate in, in tours. I know and in like um, student leadership um, kids are often um, encouraged to do uh, tours from special ed in, at, in our, at our school where, where I'm currently a teacher so that's one opportunity um, and uh, um, ideas for more would be welcome. Leave your comments below. Um, Next, do parent conferences and open house, or did I say that already? Yeah, okay, so next, do schools have the information about special ed school bus assignments? Is there a designated staff person to answer parent questions and concerns? Um, 
usually uh, somebody in the office knows about who's on the buses, and it's great if they know the details about special ed too, because case managers oftentimes have a lot going on uh, during the day, and when when it's time to leave, uh, it's it's not a good time to try to problem solve. Um, uh, the details around transportation because everybody wants to go home and the buses want to pull out and people end up missing the bus. So it's it's good if somebody in the office knows that. Um, <clears throat> moving on to inclusive staff. Um, do your regular ed teachers view all students in their classroom as their responsibility? This is sort of a, just an overarching philosophical um, question that people should be talking about and thinking about. Um, and it's it's one that's also it also people stumble on this one a lot. They 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 call you know general ed teachers might call kids your kids or or even special ed teachers might call other kids your kids rather than our kids. So um, everybody needs to be looking at students as the everybody's co collective responsibility. Um, next, do staff and teachers refer to special needs students? as our students and use people first language. Um, special needs students doesn't sound like people first language but maybe maybe that's um, part of just the conversation. So just having yeah what how do people want to be called um, do they want to be called with people first language or disability first language or identity first language um, and uh, People need to at least know, you know, those the idea of what what are those those terms and and have a conversation and it's a, it's probably a conversation worth having with the the whole team at some point every year to refresh and freshen up everybody's um, thinking on it. Um, our regular ed staff given us support and resources for adapting course material. Um, another. Uh, a huge question, um, and and I, I would I would put out there that through a collaborative process, a co-teaching model, you're gonna you're gonna um, provide a lot of support as a special ed teacher working with a general ed teacher in this with this question. So looking at collaborative teaching as a as a, a way to address this would be useful. Um, are inclusion teaching strategies and topics included in your staff development time for all regular ed and special ed staff? Um, uh, it's 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 easy to get uh, to to let these kind of special ed issues like inclusion be put on the back burner when you know the majority of the students are in, in not in special ed maybe but um, but it's but it's critical to to address it um, because uh, it it improves the everybody's experience general ed um, special ed parents, the whole community will feel a difference when, when, when uh, inclusion teaching strategies um, are made just regular and part of the expectation. Um, are regular ed and special ed teachers encouraged and given time to collaborate? Um, another huge one, <laughs> just where, where is the time and support for co collaborative teaching and co-teaching and, and professional development to support that? That that's going to be a big thing coming up when people are moving more to our collaborative teaching model. Um, are mainstream class assignments based on student needs rather than which teachers are willing to accommodate students with disabilities? A huge philosophical question. <laughs> Again, um, I think an administrative question here, um, and and needs to be kind of the expectation that. Um, it's not just based on certain teachers' strengths, but every every teacher needs to move toward this model where they're looking at student needs and being willing to accommodate that. Um, another section: inclusive placement. Um, are students with disabilities who are in regular ed classes grouped together, or are they spread proportionally throughout the classes in the building? Um, this needs to really be thought about in advance because scheduling is very, very complicated, particularly when students have um, significant needs for support and there's limited support that's available. So that's 
something that needs to be considered in advance. Um, are they seated together in the back to accommodate an aide, or are they seated in the same manner as the rest of the students? So that's something to think about. Um, I think the implication is to not seat them in the back to accommodate an aide, but have the aide address um, maybe float a little bit or uh, respond when there is support needed, but not not all the time, so they wouldn't over support somebody um, and reduce dependence. Con things to consider. Uh, next question, are students with disabilities generally able to attend schools with their siblings and neighbors? Um, next, do students with disabilities sit with their regular ed peers at lunch and assemblies? Details, but huge for, for peer development, for, for peer groups, for friendship. Um, and it'll probably play out in how things go in the classroom, too. So these, these things make a huge difference. Um, don't just have the special ed group sit in the assembly. I've seen that. Um, and I've been guilty of that from time to time, and I'm moving away from that because it's, it's, an, it's an opportunity for inclusion um, in the general ed groups. Um, are your class sizes conducive to inclusive education? Um, thinking about class sizes, is there room enough for everybody in the room? Is there support enough? Uh, moving on to inclusive activities. Are students and their families in, included in the social activities and celebrations at the school? Um, do they, I mean, that, aside from even getting the handouts, are they included in the main activities? That's, that's important. Um, and how are they being welcomed in? And are, is there like a, a group of kids who is, are checking in? There? Is everybody being included? Um, Next, are all school activities designed to be accessible to students with disabilities? That universal design approach or all activities kind of has to be part of the, the language, all, all activities universally designed. Um, do students with disabilities have access to extracurricular activities and sports at the school? Um, when That's just a, an amazing opportunity for inclusion. Um, if kids, if if all, if kids with all different needs are um, welcomed into these programs, it just it feels right. It's better for everybody involved. It it shows you the true meaning of of athletics, which is um, building community and team and working together and um, understanding you know how individual strengths work together to make a team. Um, it's just an opportunity. It's a great opportunity for inclusion, and it and it would it supports it supports the academics, it supports um, peer groups, it reduces bullying to get get everybody involved, um, just improves the community. Um, <coughs> let's go down to uh, inclusive classrooms and building. Um, do students with disabilities have lockers near their regular ed peers? A detail that makes a huge difference socially, um, and that's a little that, that takes a little extra support and planning, but it's it's really worth it. Um, you shouldn't have the special ed lockers separated from the general ed lockers. That's a it's a it's an opportunity for for inclusion right there. Are resource and special ed rooms located in the main area or of the school near the regular ed classrooms? Another another point of um, to bring up when you're planning on space. Um, how is it? How does it affect inclusion? Is there like a, a separated, segregated wing, or is it built in um, altogether? Um, um, is there a designated quiet room for students with disabilities to take a break during the day? Um, that would be um, something that could really, really help out a lot of kids, probably. Um, not to mention adults and modeling that. <laughs> um, does the school use universal design in its classrooms? Um, you can check out the video I made on universal design, and I'm also going to be coming up with a, an interview with um, um, Julie from Upstream Arts, who t was going to talk about universal design, too, in May. Um, so uh, last section, inclusive data. 
um, something that I hadn't heard people talk about much, but um, it probably is going to be the next thing to, to start tracking how is inclusion being um, implemented. Um, do you keep data on removals of students with disabilities from regular ed classes? If data shows a pattern of removals from a particular teacher, how do you respond? I definitely, I know there's data about removals. Um, um, I'd be interested to see is there data about co-teaching and, and opportunities for inclusion and how many kids participate and what is the outcome based on co-teaching for all students. Um, <clears throat> Does the school track the test results, academic performance, and graduation rates of students with disabilities along with the other populations in the school? Um, so uh, these are these are questions to ask your your administration, maybe for parents to ask out of curiosity and to, to think about how that impacts the the decisions that are made for the school. Um, so these are I'd say a starting block for thinking about how inclusive is your school and as new practices come about you can add to the to these um, um, I think it's, it's it's really useful to have the team come together and talk about this um, and you know even special ed um, teachers a lot of this isn't on their radar all the time they're kind of maybe focused in on just getting through the day um, with coverage, or how are people being covered so that nobody gets um, lost track of or something, but all of these can really, really um, improve the um, the overall experience for um, for everybody, um, students and teachers, and um, and it's worth uh, having having some professional development opportunities, building this into team planning, um, team meetings, and um, looking at this document. So I'll, like I said, I'll leave a link below to this document and uh, um, spend some time with it. And if you have questions about it, you can contact the Special Education Advisory Council. I've made a couple of videos about Special Ed Advisory Council also. Um, and uh, they are your friend. Special Ed Advisory Council is your friend. They're trying to make it a better school and we all want our schools to be um, as good as they can possibly be for all students. So thank you very much, and uh, if you have any comments, um, leave them um, down below, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Thanks.